Okay, so you want to learn how to mix your beats the proper way, and honestly, it's simple. All you got to do is EQ everything, find the right volume, find the right sounds, use the right plugins, make sure your metronome and tempo is on point, make sure you're not adding too many melodies together, make sure there's no counter melodies crashing with each other, clashing, make sure the frequencies are perfect, make sure you use all the right plugins for your master fader, and you're done. Easy, right? All right, thanks for watching. <laughs> now, nah, let's get to it for real, though. Step number one in mixing and mastering, make sure the vibe is always on point. Let's leave it at purple. Fill in that. Change that too. Let's go real quick. Oh, bam. Okay, so for the sake of this video, I'm going to be wearing headphones. Most of you guys know I usually just play, um, you know, without using headphones. I use my HS5s to just mix and do whatever I got to do. But I don't want the external sound interfering with the microphone and, you know, to get feedback and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use the headphones for this one. And as you can see here... Um, I did this. This is a collaboration I recently did with Bricks Domain. He's a platinum plaque producer. He has a lot of songs on the Billboard charts. He has a lot of number one songs on the Billboard charts. So I was kind of excited to do this this collab with him. I was very happy how it came out. So I just decided, you know what? He sent a melody over and I did the drums. So I thought it was a perfect example to show you guys what I do to EQ my drums and what I do for, you know, for plugins and stuff like that. I'm trying to I'm I'm gonna try to go through this as quick as possible because I don't want the video to be super long and boring. But this is of course a more instructional video. So yeah, let's get to it. And I'm gonna show you guys how the beat sounds. Sounded like this. Bless those keys, the RMC. Okay, so that's pretty much the beat. I haven't finished it. I just, you know, I just did it for a video that we did together. Um, so right off the back, let me just mute all this and let's just go one by one. This is the first sound that he used. So I'm pretty sure he already kind of EQ'd this and added some effects to it and stuff like that. But there's always room to EQ some stuff that you guys hear and maybe you want to take out. So the first thing I do is I go and EQ almost every single thing on the beat. Every single track I have to EQ it because you have to leave space and room for every single sound that you're using for your track. So let's go here. I'm just going to do a low cut. And the reason I'm doing the low cut is because I don't want this part of the this part of the melody interfering with the 808 or the kick and it'll punch nicer if it's EQ'd if the low end is EQ'd this way. And this is the difference with or without. So not the, no like there's hardly any difference at all but once the uh, bass and the kick come in, then there's going to be a noticeable difference. So I'm just going to leave that there like that. There's not much to really add. Okay, so what I did, he sent me the whole loop, and I chopped up the loop. And I there's this, li there's this nice um, bass that comes in with the same sound after a while, and it sounds like this.
Sounds really nice. Like I said, this this it almost sounds like mixed already. But we want to take a little bit out of the low end if I'm going to be using that once the kick and the bass comes in. So I'm going to go to audio effects and I'm going to go ahead and remove some of the low end as well. Now for this particular bass, I don't want to remove completely the bass because then you see this is how it's going to sound. You don't want to you don't want to do that. You want to just remove enough where you can still hear the low end but not where it's going to interfere with the rest of the track. So leave it right there, 36 hertz. You see all this space right here? So this is going to be for the kick later on. And it just, you know, it, it, it just cleans up the mix as well. It doesn't sound as muddy when you, re, you know, when you uh, remove a lot of the low end because then it, it causes a lot of distortion after that if you don't remove some of the low end. So we're going to leave that there like this. And that's all I'm going to do for that. Um, let's go to the, now let's go to the rest of the track, which is with the 808 and the loop right here. Okay, a huge, huge tip for your 808s. Most of the time, 808s, it's better if you just have the right 808. It's going to make your life so much easier. That's why people buy kits. That's why people, um, you know, sell kits because they know what they're doing. If you EQ an 808 and then you sell it, then you don't have a lot of stuff to worry about. You mainly have to just worry about making it sound perfect in the mix by adjusting the volume a little bit but this 808 doesn't sound bad already um, so so what i'm gonna do here and i'm just gonna eq this and yes i do take off some of the low end on the 808 let's just put this here Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, since I wanna leave room for the kick and the kick is punching, is gonna be punching somewhere around this area right here. It's, that's where it mainly punches like around 69 to 61, 61 to 69 Hertz around there. So I'm gonna bring this one down a bit where this is going up. You see those frequencies going up right here. So where that frequency is, is climbing is going up. That's where you want to bring it down. Okay, so for the hi-hats, I don't do much for hi-hats. Usually my hi-hats are always like, you know, pretty simple to EQ. Just Because our hats don't even really have a lot of low end. So you just want to you know, take all this off. And just EQ wherever the frequencies are hitting hard. If you, if you like the sharpness and the hi-hat to, you know, hit really strong then just raise the high frequencies you know right here in the highs i mean i don't really like that i like to lower it down a little bit just because it gives it more of a subtle sound and it, it doesn't disturb the ear as much so you hear the difference I don't really like that sound, but if you leave it right here, it's just, it's just blending in with the mix. So for the clap, you just want to cut a lot of the low end as well. You want to just clean that area, even if you don't have anything really showing in the low end. Uh, and with the low frequencies, it doesn't matter. The cleaner, the better. Keep that in mind. Now for my for my claps, I do like to raise up the frequencies right here, kind of in the mid section, kind of you know close to the high, but it's more to the mid section. Not too much, but I like the clap to cut through the mix, because the clap kind of sometimes it's, it's matching with the vocal, so it has to be kind of noticeable in in the beat. Now 
here comes the kick. Now let me just put the kick and the 808 with the melody by themselves. I don't know if you can hear, there's a little bit of distortion already uh, with the kick and the 808. So let's just take out the melody and... So let's EQ the eight of the kick. Now remember earlier I said that I was gonna leave some room here with where the 808 was kicking, where the 808 was hitting, sorry. So the kick can just stand out even better. See, now we're just removing a little bit of the low end. It does, it does clean up the kick a whole lot. So, you know, low end, you have to be careful how you use it. So basically for the kick, I did with the opposite that I, what I did for the 808. It's kind of like side chaining in a way. Um, I left room where the 808 is not hitting and the kick is definitely hitting in that section, so. Now let's go to the piano sound. Now every time you add another instrument, you gotta be very careful that you're not taking over the whole beat with that instrument. Like the piano's a little high right there. And we're going to EQ the piano, of course. I'm going to raise some of the highs because I want the high and the, some of the mids to stand out more than the low end. Yeah, you guys, that's pretty much it. That's all I have for you guys today. Like I said, I didn't want to make this video long, even though I think it was still long anyways. But let me know if you guys have some questions. Just write them down below. Maybe I could do a part two to this. And also, I want to let you guys know that I am going to be releasing a MIDI pack very, very soon. All Melodies MIDI pack for absolutely $0 is going to be absolutely free. So get excited for that. I know I am. And also, don't don't forget to like and subscribe this video if it was helpful for you guys. And don't forget to join our Discord group. You could hit the link down in the description. So go ahead and do that. Till next time, it's your boy. I'm out. Peace. Bless those keys, the RMC.